Welcome back to another review from The Modernist Guide. Today we're talking about The Harder They Fall, a Netflix original feature film that is the directorial debut of music producer and songwriter James Samuel, aka The Bullets. He's a close friend of Jay-Z from what I can find of him. Probably has produced a couple of his songs he's done a short documentary about him jay-z is an executive producer on this movie and it shows in the soundtrack for sure it's honestly really good it is a primarily almost completely black cast western starring idris alba as the antagonist rufus buck jonathan majors as nat love which he's been making huge waves the past couple of years the Last Black Man in San Francisco in 2019, Lovecraft Country, and is now Kang the Conqueror in the MCU films. So he's just having a hell of a year. Zazie Beats as Stagecoach Mary. Regina King off of her uh, huge hit in Watchmen as Treacherous Trudy. Delroy Lindo, Lakeith Stanfield as Cherokee Bill. RJ Seiler as Jim Beckworth. Danielle DeWheeler as Cuffy, or aka Kathy Williams, Eddie Gathegi as Bill Pickett, and all of these names of the characters they're portraying are real life African American cowboys of different uh, mixed races. Some, some were born into slavery uh, with uh, white parents, uh, two of them were Cherokee Native American. But the film is less about being remotely historically accurate as in a very interesting opening states that the characters are completely true but the story isn't which reminds me a lot of the opening to a brother where art thou by the coen brothers which talks about uh things being completely true change to protect the identities for, of people but it absolutely happened like in fargo so already we're setting a standard of borrowing but not necessarily like ripping off tropes at all it's also very quentin tarantino-esque but not in the same gory way but it is definitely a love letter to the type of filmmaking that it clearly is a part of without ever really feeling like it's trying to emulate it just knows how to use itself in the scenes that on screen at that time nat love is out for revenge for his parents being murdered by rufus buck at a early young age and he was left alive so this is definitely a revenge western and it being an ensemble though really works to its effect the most because ensemble westerns i think are better they're my favorite i like the wild bunch a lot my favorite western is probably silverado because it doesn't take itself too seriously because i don't know stuff like unforgiven and a couple of random John Wayne films just never hit me the same way for other people. But when it's a big cast, I really enjoy. The film really takes its time. It's kind of forever, a little bit in the middle. And it has some plot choices that I think don't really work and kind of hamper the film's pacing and the, I guess, just the general choices of some characters that I think are super unnecessary that's all i really have bad to say about it it could probably have taken about 30 minutes off it's a two hour and 18 minute film something like that and it tells a great story and it doesn't feel hampered at all creatively but maybe someone needed to rein them in just a little bit somewhere like i said before it's kind of cohen-esque it's quentin tarantino-esque but where quentin really just kind of laid in on the violence this is a more stylized blurry uh super colorful hyper violence but it's not bloody as much as like the fist fights and the gun fights are shot in a very stylish i would say music video-esque way which james samuel has a lot of experience in again from his uh music producing days and there's a lot of music in this. A lot of it was apparently scored by Jay-Z. There's, I recognize Kid Cudi's voice. There's a lot of like rappers and R&B artists that are out there right now. And it's on Spotify and probably Tidal since it's a Jay-Z project. 
and I would suggest anybody to go listen to the soundtrack. And I can't imagine, I've never liked this argument that like something like rap or anything really, uh, any kind of music isn't allowed to be in a different time period. I remember that being a big weird argument for Django and Chain about rap not being in there and it makes it historically inaccurate even though, you know, it wasn't actually in the film setting, it was the soundtrack. But I think that argument is always dumb and biased and it only seems to happen when hip hop is involved. Super weird. I'm not going to get into spoilers too much. There's a pretty amazing twist at the end that I just was so enthralled with all the character work that I didn't really think about logically getting to there until we got there. I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense. That's all I really want to say about it. I don't want to get into character deaths either because I don't want to give away the anticipation or the importance of each death, how and when and all of that. There's a lot of good jokey nonsense in here. Uh, one of the best, I would say it's a race joke, but you know, it's like a boondocks level haha -ha white people race joke and it's absolutely fucking hilarious. And if you don't want it spoiled, you can skip ahead to this time right here and it's only gonna be like 30 seconds, maybe a minute less probably. Okay, so they are at the black people town. It's like almost all black people and it's such a beautiful color palette, like almost Wes Anderson levels of different deep greens and blues and pinks and stuff and it's gorgeous. It's a very beautiful use of color and there's even more during the fight scene. But they have to leave to go rob a bank in a white town. That's a setup for the good guys because you know they rob white people, they're going to get really fucked. That's the idea. And the antagonist has something to hold over them in order for them to go do it. So they go to the white town. <laughs> and it's a white town. It's completely white. The gravel is that dusty, ashy white gravel. And the buildings are painted monochrome white. The inside is just pure white columns and stuff. And it's so fucking funny. <laughs> I, I got busted laughing. I loved it. And that alone is worth watching. It's just hilarious. But so anyways, yeah, it's definitely worth watching. It's probably one of Netflix's best big budget films. Uh, every, every actor is so good in this. Of course they are. I'm a huge fan of Keith Stanfield and Idris Elba and have been won over by Regina King. I don't know a lot about Zazie Beetz, but she did great. I've always liked what little I've seen of Eddie Gathegi, even when he was fucking a vampire in Twilight, he just stood out, um, you know, for some sad reasons, being like, I think probably the only black guy in the whole series, but also like, he, he just has these amazing like eyes, the way he uses his facial acting responses is just always fantastic. I'm super won over by Jonathan Majors, like seriously, he's been doing great and everything. I need to watch Lovecraft Country for real. Uh, I've, it's on the list like everything else. But this is absolutely worth watching. It drags in the middle and makes some weird choices uh, to... I don't know. Like, they have Zazie Beetz's character, Stagecoach Mary, do something that I think was super unnecessary and almost kind of strips what badassery she had for a little while, but she gets it back, and that's fine. It's a good fight scene, but it just... She's made a damsel in distress, and that seems kind of pointless. Because you already have the revenge part. Why make it worse? But overall, I'd give this about 7.5 out of 10. Almost an 8. It just drags too much. But, like, it's worth an 8 as well. I really enjoyed it. I'd watch it again. And we should have more like this. Because it's cl clearly showing what creative license and freedom of being colorblind in your casting and in your writing style it just, you can do whatever the fuck you want and it's great. And we should have more of it. There's still plenty of stories like westerns and other things to tell that hasn't been told from this perspective that we should totally just do and not argue about it. So that's all and I appreciate it. Thank you. Like and subscribe and have a good night.